I had a question um, the other day about making a faster um, glove hand. And um, one of their ideas was maybe adding a resistance band. Um, and rightly so, they were thinking to, to, to tap into some of the fast twitch muscle fibers, which require a little bit heavier load. Um, I'm not sure... I'm not sure that that's the right way to go with it. Um, I'm not sure that adding sufficient overload isn't going to slow down the movement. Um, so I think it's not, you know, and for sure it's not really a matter of strength. Um, it's more, I think, a matter of the, the neuromuscular response and trying to train that pathway to be a little bit quicker. Now, we're all born with different percentages of slow and fast twitch fibers. And it's actually the motor nerve that dictates whether you're a fast, whether it's a fast twitch fiber or a slow twitch fiber. So without getting into too much detail, but if I um, switched all my, if I took a slow twitch muscle and then I took one of my fast twitch motor units and I took that neuron and I plugged it into a slow twitch fiber, then not like right away, but over time it would it would change and adapt to become a fast twitch fiber. So it's really the nerve um, that dictates whether it's a fast or a slow twitch fiber. Um, we can't really do that <laughs> and plug things in. So I mean, as I'm a, I'm a slow twitch kind of gal, um, I'm much happier um, running. 10k or more successful should I say running 10k or a marathon than I'd ever be running a hundred meter dash um, I can train myself and make myself faster at the hundred meter dash but I will never ever compete with even my friends who are more fast twitch than I am it just is not going to happen for me I have to give up that dream um, so to some extent it's a similar thing um, you know, we can't really speed the transmission rate of, um, of our nerves, of the impulses, but we can sort of groove the pattern a little bit more so that your brain doesn't have to think about it as much. It's kind of like, um, um, you know, your friend moves to a new house and the first few times you drive there, you're like, oh, I think it's this street and you maybe go down the wrong street and then come around and eventually you get there, but it takes a while. And then the next time you're like, no, I know it's not that street, but still you're kind of driving a little bit slowly, holding up traffic, meet me behind you, because you're looking to find the right street. And then the third time you go there, you're like, psh, psh. you know, you don't even think about it. You wheel in the driveway and away you go. So this is the exact same thing. You know, my if I'm if this is a little bit foreign to me, you know, I how many glove saves do you make in a game? Not that many. So you know, the more you can practice that pattern and get your glove hand moving and making different precise um, save movements, it's going to groove that pattern so that your brain doesn't have to take as much time to process the information. It's like, oh yeah, they just need to do that and you're good to go. So, I mean, one of my favorites still is juggling the ball off the wall. So just a tennis ball, juggle, catch, juggle, catch, single hand different positions, overhead. I think sometimes people do a lot of it here, kind of underhand, but you're not really making glove saves underhand very often unless you're sort of handcuffed. So, you know, here, 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 um, getting those patterns going. And again, I think it's not a bad idea to try with both hands, um, just to give your brain, you know, that much more input. A couple others that um, I like just on working on the speed. If I have a ball here and I drop it, I'm going to try to slap my hip and then uh, catch it before it hits the ground. So I better hold it up pretty high and catch. And then come around. Then you might try two, two slaps or you might try a different part of your body, you know. Um, but that's a way that, you know, you sort of have to force you to move a little quicker and also react to something. Consider what other things are going on for the goalie so not only are you thinking about what your hands are doing but you're also making movements with your legs and trying to track the puck so um, I think another one that might be worth trying is um, again doing a ball drop but then dropping to your knees or dropping a knee before catching the ball so that you're tying it to a reaction with the legs as well let's see how this goes I've, I don't have very high expectations of myself on this one here we go Oh, bobbled it. Bobbler.
Got it, but I kind of brought my other hand over there. So I think we've established that I suck at that drill. <laughs> but it's, as I tell the athletes, it's good to find things that you suck at because then it's something you can make yourself better at. So um, I'll just keep telling myself that um, I'm, I'll, I'll be in the office crying for the next few minutes. That's okay. Um, so those are a few ideas. I don't think it's a strength issue. I think it's a speed issue. And um, it really is true. How many of you work on your hand speed, your reaction speed away from the ice? Probably a very small percentage. So it's an area where you can make a huge improvement and a huge impact. Give these drills a try. I'm sure it's going to make your glove hand uh, faster. And uh, let me know how it goes for you. Let me know how you make out with that one. I'm kind of mad at it right now. But I'll get over it. This is Maria from HockeyTrainingPro.com and UltimateGoalieTraining.com. Happy training, gang.